Hi, my name is Dave Hiddeman. I'm the Applications Specialist for the Steel segment here at Trimble. And today we're going to talk about custom components and bindings. Um, so in a previous video I talked about the four different types of custom components. Uh, so those are great for just gluing together a bunch of parts that are going to be a fixed size and shape. Um, but if you ever need to have these start to adapt or adjust based on um, the size and shape of the members involved, you're going to have to learn about bindings and how to use them. So if I go ahead and open up this custom component that I had created um, inside of the editor, and I realize this is just a simple shear tab, but um, that's not going to really uh, get in the way of us taking a look at these bindings. Um, all of the parts inside of your component are going to have handles and I don't really uh, care what it is they're they're all gonna have handles um, except maybe this standard weld but your cuts are gonna have handles your plates are gonna have handles any beam objects are gonna have handles bolt groups have start and end handles this particular weld does not um, but if you were to use a polygon weld instead of a standard simple weld uh, the polygon weld would have handles as well um, which, by the way, little side note, you can right-click on this weld and convert it to a polygon weld if you do need to control the length or the position of the actual start and end of that weld. Um, so in any case, to go ahead and create bindings, what you have to do is select a handle that you want to bind, right-click and choose the option Bind to Plane. Now it doesn't have to be one handle at a time, it can be multiple handles at a time. Um, doing multiple handles it becomes a little bit easier if you hold down the Alt key and drag a box around the handles, uh, and then you can actually select multiples at the same time. That's not the only way, that just happens to be the most common way that I see. Um, once you have those, you right click as I mentioned and hit bind to plane. And at that point now you can see that there are planes being illuminated when I move my mouse around in the editor view. Um, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're rendered solid. If you were to do a rendered transparent, it makes it a little bit tougher to grab those desired bindings. Um, so you want to go ahead and make sure that you're set to rendered solid when you're doing this. Now as far as the bindings that you have to choose from, um, the custom component editor toolbar that pops up uh, gives you the option to change which binding you're in. So right now it's set to boundary planes. And boundary planes are going to be kind of the, uh, the outermost um, uh, perimeter of the shape, if that makes any sense. Kind of the outside um, faces. So, you know, here it's across the toes of this beam. Here would be the top flange of this beam. This would be across the toes of the main supporting member. So that would be a boundary plane, is the, the theoretical box that is drawn around the profile that you're trying to bind to. Um, and the next one you would have is a center plane, so that's pretty self-explanatory. You're hitting the center line of an object if you wanted to bind something. And there are center lines at half depth, by the way, of, uh, of things like wide flange members. So there's, um, there's that option, binding to a center plane. Uh, you have the option for outline planes, and outlines are going to be more of the individual details. So outline is going to be like the toe of a flange or the face of a web or the bottom kind of inside of a flange here. So, so that gives you a little bit more detail on the geometry of the member rather than just, you know, this outline or perimeter around the shape or the, the boundary plane around a shape. Uh, you also can bind to cut planes, so um, any cuts that are created here, like for example, I have a fitting cut and I have a, uh, a polygon cut here providing the cope, so I can actually bind objects to cuts so that if we have the cut move, then the binding uh, will obviously adjust based on that. And then finally we have the component planes, and the component planes are what is this component centered around or kind of focused on. Um, in this case, you can see that it's the center line or the middle of each part. Now, I had kind of touched on this in the previous video, but we didn't go into a ton of detail. Um, when you're defining a component, you have this option um, on the position tab to go ahead and change the position type. And you have middle, box plane, collision plane, end, end, and gusset plane. Now, so this, this kind of says the, the component should be focused about this location, and that's going to affect the component planes that I can bind to. So if I have it set to middle, like I do with this current one, it's essentially the same thing as center uh, or center line. 
The middle is where the center line of the secondary hits the center line of the primary. So that's basically the same as doing a center plane. Box plane is going to be very similar to your boundary plane. It's the box around the shape. Uh, collision plane is where they physically intersect. So where this uh, the center line of the main member physically crosses the collision plane, or say the face of the web in this case, um, of the supporting member. An end-to-end -end plane is going to be for any time you're creating a, uh, a splice between two members that are running in line with each other. And then a gusset plane is when you want to create bracing that's going to have especially more than one secondary. But this option, when you define the custom component, is going to change what you see when you do the component planes option here and you try to bind your handles. So that does have a direct correlation on which planes you see here uh, to bind to. So you know, let's just take a, an example here of what I might want to do. Um, this plate, let's say I want to bind the top handles of this plate to the top flange of the beam. I would go ahead and switch this probably to the boundary planes um, and then right click bind to plane and go ahead and snap to the top of that and as you can see there are two dimensions that are created here those are my bindings for my top two handles they also get added to this variables list inside of the component so if I hit display variables and let me bring this over from my second screen now we can see there is a distance 1, that's what the D stands for, distance 1 and distance 2. They're currently set to 2 inches, they are length type variables, and uh, they're currently going to be shown in my dialog box, which I probably wouldn't want uh, for something like this, but um, you know that is, that is an option that we have here to show or to hide. Now you can actually see how changing these values will automatically affect it here in the editor. So if I go ahead and change this to say three inches, and let me go ahead and uh, rotate this a little bit. Now you can actually see it take effect. I'll change that back to two. So you can see how by changing these values right here in the variables list, we can see the reaction that we're getting on the plate. And uh, this is just a great way to test your component and see if it's working the way uh, that you want it to. Now you can actually add formulas in here having these values controlled by yet another parameter or calculated based on properties of the member. I'm not going to touch on that in this particular video, but that is something that we, uh, we can talk about um, at another time. So if I wanted to you know, go ahead and set up some other bindings, I might want to take the bottom handles of this plate and bind them to the top. I may want to take the handles of this plate and, and you can see what I did there. I held down the alt key and drag a box around all four handles at once because I want to go ahead and bind all of those to the web. Well here I can't grab the web. Remember I have boundary plane set so I'm grabbing that theoretical box around the beam. So here I would change this to the outline planes and go ahead and select the web now. So you can see here we've got two handles that are at zero, that means they're flush against the face of that web, and two that are at four inches. Again, we can test these if you wanted to change the dimension, and you can see how those react here. Now anything that you bind, any of these handles, um, if they're above a zero, larger than zero, they're automatically going to be set to show in the dialog box, which means that when I close out of the editor and look at this in the model, we'll be able to adjust these on the fly. Sometimes you want them to be shown and sometimes you won't want them to be shown, so make sure that you have these set properly. If they are set to show, this label in dialog box field will be what it actually says. So in this case, um, this value here is the front of the plate, and you can see that as I select each line, it's showing me the dimension, which binding I'm talking about. So I might change this to like front handle from top flange, and uh, maybe I'll change the second one to back handle from top flange. So kind of a silly example, but hopefully this uh, will illustrate for you what those labels do. Um, so I'm going to stop there for now and just kind of see what we've got. So I'm going to close out of the editor by uh, hitting the X on the component toolbar. Um, it's warning me that I've already got these in the model. Do I want to save these changes and replace and update all the current instances? And I'll say yes. So now my component, if I double click on the cone, I'm going to have 
values that I can adjust and these are the bindings that I have created. As you can see the first two actually say front handle from top flange and back handle from top flange. The other ones I didn't adjust the text so we don't get to see a whole lot there besides the generic name. But if we wanted to try this out we could go ahead and change the front handle to one inch and hit modify. Hit the back handle to one inch and say modify change the, um, I, I never labeled these, so I'm not sure which handle is which, but let's say we wanted to adjust this to six. So, you know, as you can see, very, very quickly through the use of bindings, you can go ahead and add some controls to be able to change where these handles start and stop. And when you can change where the handles start and stop, you can change the size of things like plates, you can change the size of copes, you can change the location of um, fitting cuts and line cuts. So there's a whole lot you can do just through that simple binding method to give you control over every single aspect of that um, through these variables. Now it's not going to change my bolt locations, we're going to touch on that later. The only thing that you can control through a binding of a handle is going to be that top handle of the bolt um, group, right? Um, so you could change that location and you could change the direction of the bolt group by moving the second handle, but you're not able to change the spacing that way. We'll have to touch on that in another video. So I hope you found this helpful. We're going to be, you know, continuing to put out these custom component videos, kind of touching on the dis different aspects and, and controls that you can put in them. Um, but even with this simple feature, you can go ahead and make some really powerful tools based off of uh, some simple modeling techniques that we talked about uh, in the last video. So as always, thank you for watching. Go ahead and leave some questions or comments down below um, if you have some specific issues you want to see uh, covered about custom components, and uh, we'll see you next time.